Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Ali and in this video I'm going to be using Timeline in Kibana to plot the bandwidth of a FortiGate firewall interface. In a previous video I used a Python script to run um, API requests to the firewall and grab the bandwidth data and send it to Logstash and from Logstash parse that data and send it to Elasticsearch for uh, storage. And the purpose I was doing this is to have accurate bandwidth information for longer periods of time using um, or taking advantage of the last search uh, capability of searching and storing the data. Something to note is that you need to have 40OS 7.0 and newer. This API is not available for um, older 40OS versions. And you can refer to my last video to watch how I uh, got the data from the FortiGate and sent it to Elasticsearch. So under Discover, this is the index I am uh, using. Um, it's a small index and every document has a timestamp and these two fields, last Rx or last received uh, bandwidth value in bits per second and the last Tx, last transmitted. So it's like the downloads and the uploads. And I'm going to be using a Kibana feature to add the total bandwidth by using a runtime field or a scripted field. And I'll call it the total bandwidth. And it's just the, uh, the addition or summation of these two fields. So I'm going to a stack management and under Kibana, data views. This was called index patterns. Um, under bandwidth, our data view, I'll go to scripted fields. I'll add a scripted field and I'm going to call it total bandwidth. And the language is this painless scripted uh, scripting language. And the way you access the value of the documents or the value of the field is with this format document some field dot value. Uh, so the field last rx dot value plus last tx. So we'll have a new field, not indexed in Elasticsearch. This is just uh, in Kibana. It shows up in Kibana when you look at the data. So it's called total uh, total bandwidth, and it has the the value of these together create field and now after I created the total bandwidth I can see it here under discover and this is a field that is just the summation of the last rx and last tx it will be with every document or other every field now if we go to visualize library and create a visualization Elastic recommends using Lens, uh, which is an easy way to understand your data, visualize it in a very simple way uh, by dragging and dropping the fields. For example, I'm going to drop uh, the timestamp here and you can see now it's on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis, I'm going to choose the last value of my field that is the last Rx or um, the downloads and you can choose he, from here the index you can choose the type of the uh, graph and you have a very simple graph very easy uh, to understand but the values here on the y-axis are just big numbers without units um, you can add things like you can change the value format for example to a number to bytes uh, but that will change the accuracy of my values because I know my values from the documentation and from discover that my values are already in bits per second um, so I don't need to change the value format here or add a suffix for example per second because this is not accurate. This is now megabytes per second. I need to see it in megabits per second. Uh, so that's why I will be 
going to timeline and not using lens. And the one I'm going to pick is under aggregation based and it is the timeline. And the reason I'm using timeline is because of the customizations I, I can do with it. Uh, you can uh, customize the labels, the titles, uh, and most importantly, the units on the y-axis because my data is in bits per second. Uh, I will show you here. So by default, timeline uh, uses expressions or like functions dot es or dot elasticsearch. It's grabbing data from elasticsearch and star is just all the indexes. It's counting all the documents in all indexes. But what we need to do is we need to specify the index and ours will be the bandwidth and we need to specify the time field which is a timestamp and comma q for query and we are looking at last rx field colon star so all values say comma and we need to specify the metric uh, with metric i found that max will do the last value of or the, the, the specific value of the field itself. So last rx, because we'll, we're looking at rx and I don't need any more commas here. And I can say dot y axis. I'll specify the units in bits per second. This is why, this is the reason I chose timeline. Bits per second, and I can say something like color or I'll keep the color uh, default or you can keep or you can uh, choose a different color and now I'm plotting the uploads or last received as the downloads and I can also um, specify a label label equal download and now I have a label and when I hover over the graph, it will give me the value. And now if I want to graph the last TX values or the uploads, all I have to do is say comma and instead of writing everything again, I'll just copy paste and instead of RX, I'll say TX. Instead of download, I'll say upload. And instead of blue, I'll say orange. And you can uh, press Control Enter on the keyboard or click here update. And now I have two graphs for downloads and uploads. You can do the same for the total bandwidth and add another um, statement for the total bandwidth and add the total bandwidth of on, on the graph and I can look at seven days if you have more data you can change and I'll just keep it back for one hour or half an hour you can add things like uh, title bandwidth on the external interface for example and now you have a title for the graph i'm going to save it and i will add it to my 48 traffic events dashboard. I'll say we can go to the dashboard and it will be at the bottom here.
right, I'm going to save the dashboard and switch to U mode. And if I change the time, everything will update on the dashboard. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more of these tutorials. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.